my name is Mark Jordan and I teach biology at Green Mountain College. White nose syndrome is a pathogen or a, a disorder that's affecting bats uh, throughout New England and other parts of the eastern United States. It's called that because it shows up as kind of a white, looks like a powdery substance on the nose of bats and um, that's how they first noticed the, the disease. There isn't that much known about it. We're three years on and most of our cave bats are pretty much dead now here in this area of New England and, and in uh, adjacent New York where it pretty much started. What seems to happen with the disease is it causes the bats to wake up from hibernation too early. It somehow sends a signal that it's time to go out, that it's spring, time to go out and start foraging again. Um, but it's happening in the winter, so they're waking up and there's nothing to eat. And so they end up um, starving, basically, is what happens, is the, the negative consequence. The bats go into hibernation in apparently in good condition, at least in terms of body weight. That's all we do is just weigh them. And uh, they have to uh, come out early. They've lost a tremendous amount of weight while they are in hibernation. And some of them come out in the winter looking for food. Some of them come out too early in the spring looking for food because they've dropped body weight drastically. Uh, they have incidentally noticed this growth of fungus around their nose and on the wing and various places on the body giving rise to this colloquial uh, name of white nose disease. It was first found just outside of Albany, New York. And then it's also been found in Vermont I believe it's been found as far south as Pennsylvania and perhaps further south than that. The extreme effects, if we're going to look at the range of potential effects, we can have literally no effect, the population bounces back to extinction. And that really is, in essence, is all that really is known. They haven't a clue what this fungus does, they put a name to it finally. They haven't a clue what the metabolic state of these animals is like in hibernation and if that's any different from previous years when things were normal. But they just do not know what they're, what they're dealing with even three years on. What would happen if you lost all the bats? Bats are, are very important to the ecosystem because they can control insect populations. There are lots of uh, statistics that are generated on the numbers of insects that bats consume every day. The more you read about it, the more astonishing it is uh, as to the volume of, uh, of insects that they take out of the, uh, the food chain. There's a great danger to our local and regional ecosystem if we were to lose um, a substantial amount or even all of the, of the bats living in Vermont. They're a major consumer of mosquitoes. You can imagine what would happen to the mosquito population if there was nothing keeping it in check. Mosquitoes are vectors for disease. You likely see increase in mosquito-borne diseases in birds and reptiles and other, and other organisms. Never mind uh, what could happen at the agricultural level, at the forest level, of uh, just having too many of anything in your ecosystem. There's, you've lost that sense of balance. I'm uh, Roderick Pingree uh, from Rutland, Vermont. Caving has been pretty much my whole life. The sport cavers are feeling really, really hurt by saying, what do you mean we can't go and cave? You know, this is our sport, this is our fun, it's what we want to do. I guess probably the other half of the generation, myself included, by saying, since we don't know enough about what's happening, we can back off, let the bats sort of regroup. Hopefully they get themselves immune to some of this virus and bounce back. Unfortunately, bats suffer from being uncharismatic. You know, they're not warm and fuzzy like uh, the red squirrel or even the honeybee, you know, which is undergoing the, the problems. You've got, you've got to like change the image maybe, then there might be a little funding coming along. Time's going to tell us what, what really is going to happen. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the more awareness we have, you know, the better it is. We were watching the bats become extinct in front of our eyes, and there's nothing we can do about it. 
uh, there should be some funding put onto this too. We're looking at the extinction of quite a few important animals in a fairly large proportion of the United States. It seems that it would be dangerous to not limit cave explorations, especially in caves where we have seen outbreaks of this disease. Spores are microscopic and they're in the air and they can easily be transferred from one cave to another. Don't go caving. Don't go in there for however long it takes. Let the bats recover and come back to their full you know, potential in the area. If you are going to go caving, the best method that we have is the good old Korox, you know, the bleach, chlorine bleach. Uh, ten part, you know, ten part water, one part Korox. Uh, and soak, scrub. Uh, again, there's no guarantees, but that's as best as we can you know, come up with. And that's why for the bats in general now, it just simply stay out of the cave. Thank you.